So let's start with the absolute basics. This simple little table here is used to generate all of our examples just to keep things consistent. I'm going to select the data we want. I'm going to go to the insert tab, go to the bar chart drop down, and select the chart type I want. It's just a standard 2D column. When you drop these in, they're all going to kind of look the same like this. Now we can go to select data and make sure we have everything we want selected. So in this case, I've got everything except it says one and two instead of saying the year name. So to adjust that, I'm going to go to horizontal axis labels. I'm going to select 2004 and 2022, hit enter, and voila, we've got 2004 and 2022. It can be a little tricky at first using the select data source menu here. So I'm just going to walk you through what these are. Y values in this case are just whatever you're plotting. Where's your data? In this case for Norway, it would be five and nine, right? Horizontal category axis labels are what we just showed you, the labels that go on the horizontal axis. The series is just the data being included. It's typically referring to a single column or row of data. So Norway is a series, Denmark is a series, and Sweden is one. If we wanted to add another, we could just hit the plus here, and if we wanted to remove one, we could hit the minus. Every single bar chart, we're going to be going through the same process. Select our data, get it all set up, make sure our labels are right, and that's our chart. But let's talk about the bar chart types. So there's really just three main chart types. They've just been set up in lots of different ways here, so it looks like there are more. At the core of it, you have a standard bar chart. That's like the one you see here. You have a stacked bar chart. That's like this example here where you're stacking values on top of each other and you have a 100% bar chart. And that's when all of the values are stacked to fully fill the space. It's really intended to show ratios, not necessarily to show whole numbers. When we see all these other chart types here, they're really just changing the style. So do we want a vertical column bar? Do we want a horizontal bar? Do we want a 3D bar? They all fall still into those three basic types, standard, stacked, or 100% stacked but you're just changing the orientation. Now there's also one other type of secret chart that a lot of people don't know about. If you go in and you have two bars, like you see in this example here, under format data series, if you make it 100% overlap, you can create this bar chart, which I think of as kind of like a target bar chart or a forecast bar chart. If you wanna show how much higher or lower you are than a target value, this is a great chart to use. Okay, so now we know the types of charts we have, how to create them. Let's talk about styling them, making them look cool like all the examples you see here behind me. I start every single chart the same way. I remove my background over in the format chart area. I remove the outline. I go over and I make sure my font color is gonna show up on my background. If it's a darker background like this, I might change the font to white. If it's a lighter background, I'll probably use a darker font. You wanna make sure that there's lots of contrast between your background and your foreground. We want that font to just be as easily readable as possible. If you want a background on your chart, I don't suggest using the chart fill like this. Instead, I suggest using a separate shape. All of these charts are separate from the shape behind them. Shapes are really easy to use under the insert tab. You just go to shapes and you can drop in any type of shape you want. I use a lot of rounded rectangles and you can style these shapes. It works exactly the same way as PowerPoint. Um, Nothing new here. If you've used PowerPoint before, you're going to be just fine using these shape styling options. When you're choosing fonts, typically use something professional. Don't use a really stylized over the top font unless you're using it for something like a playful project, not like professional work. Readability is really the key thing here. So typically the next thing I do is I customize each series in my chart. Like I mentioned before, when we talk about series, this is ten, tends to just be like one column or one row of your data. So in this case, Norway is a series, Denmark is a series, and Sweden is a series. So we can customize each series using a fill color or a border. Uh, in this case, we could add like a gradient fill. If we wanted to add a border, we could add like a white outline around the outside, something like that. And you can do the same thing for each series separately. Each one has its own settings. If you don't want to customize the whole series, but just one specific bar, you can actually click into a specific bar and make it its own color. This is useful if you just want to emphasize one specific data point. Now, I just want to pause here and emphasize you can customize basically every single element of your charts in Excel. You can just customize these lines in the background, each specific font for each specific section, the background, all this stuff. I'm going to be getting into all of that in a second. 
I just think a lot of people often don't realize all these customizations are available to them. So it's just good to know that they're there. On bar charts, we have this little menu on the far right. This is going to give you your series options. And what this is going to let you do is change your series overlap at 100% overlap. All your bars are going to be right on top of each other. At 0%, they're all going to be touching each other, but separated. And at minus 100%, they're going to be spaced out as far from each other as possible. In this example, we'll use like minus 25%. Gap width is going to be the space in between the bars. If you want your bars to be wider, decrease your gap width. If you want them to be narrower, increase your gap width. I like to just play with these till it looks right. A lot of times by default, your chart might look a little too crowded or too f spread out. This is a way to dial that in and make it look good. You don't need to be an expert here. You just make it look right to you. It doesn't have to be perfect. And one last thing, under this little menu here, we've got the option to add things like drop shadows, glows, etc. If you just want to make things stand out or you want to have a little bit of a 3D effect, you'd be able to do that using some of these features here. It can take a little bit of practice. I don't suggest you always use effects like this because it can be a little over the top and look a little less professional sometimes, but it's good to test them out. Try out adding a glow, try out changing the color, the size, and the transparency, just so you get a feel for how it works. So next it's important to understand how to style your labels and your axes. We can change the fonts for specific sections if we need to. If you want to make them bigger, bolder, underlined, all that kind of stuff, you have the option to do that. This axis options menu here is really good to understand. Typically all of these automatic settings are going to work for you, but if you need to customize, if your axes aren't looking right, it's good to understand what the differences are between say, putting your horizontal axis at a particular category number or at a maximum or changing your axis position. So give these a try. One of the useful things in here is to reverse order. So if you ever need to flip these, you can click that and it's gonna flip them for you, which can be useful in some circumstances. When you're working on say a horizontal axis or just an axis that's marking out all of the values for something like this, you can also really get into the nitty gritty of like how you wanna format those numbers, where you wanna position the labels. If you want them next to the axis, if you want them low, high, or in another position, if you want to change to a logarithmic scale, scale, you have the option here. I mentioned this before, if you need to reverse the order of the values, you can do that here. Also, if you're in a situation where you really need to set the maximum and minimum value manually like this, if you need the minimum to be zero or the maximum to be higher, this is where you do it. And this is going to be really useful. If you have a chart where you really need it to start at zero and not just at the lowest value, you can manually set that here in the axis options. Now under your chart design tab, under add chart element, there are actually a lot of other elements you can add. The ones that I think people aren't as aware of are adding in error bars. This is something that I personally do not use very often, but if you need to show that there's a range in the data, you can click into these and customize them here if you want to change uh, if, which direction it's going into, the in style and cap value, the percentage, all these things can be adjusted here. Now here's the thing I tell people to do. This is a great exercise. Go through every single one of these chart element types, add them in and try customizing them. Test out all the customization options. Even if you don't think you're gonna use them very often, it's great to just know that they're there. And you might find in the future at some point, there's a creative way to use them that you haven't thought of before. You can add in grid lines as well. These can be horizontal or vertical. And you have major and minor ones, meaning you can have a primary one and a secondary one if you really need to show a lot of granularity. If you're dropping in a legend, it's important to understand that you can customize your legend. So clicking into it, exploring all the customization options here, especially around the position of the legend is useful. Also note, you can manually move around your legend if you need to. If you just need to drop it somewhere in a specific spot, you can do that manually. And you have the option to add in trend lines if you want to have a general trend shown. We have different types of trend lines which apply in different situations. When you add in a trend line, you also can choose which series that you want to apply it to. So you don't necessarily need to add one to every single series when you drop it in. So those are the basics. That's basically everything you can do in Excel with bar charts. I'm going to show you some fun little tricks here and examples as well just to kind of get you up to speed. I think it'll help open your mind up to some of the creative possibilities here. So if we want to have an image fill like this, we can go to the insert tab and just find any image we want. I'm going to grab an icon here. Preferably an image with a transparent background is going to help. So we could drop in anything we want. Let's go with 
an alien, insert. And once that alien's dropped in, you can format it, change it to whatever color you want. Now, if you copy this, Command C, click on your bar, go to Picture or Texture Fill, and then hit Clipboard, it's going to drop it in. Now, it might show up like this, all stretched out. If that's the case, just hit Stack, and it'll fix it for you. You may also find yourself tempted to use all of the cool 3D chart options here in Excel. I frankly think there is rarely a time to use these. The only one that I think has some specific use cases that are very valuable is this 3D column option at the very, very end here. The only reason I think this one is a little more useful is that it breaks things down in such a way that you could see a larger collection of data points in 3D space and compare their heights a little more easily in some situations. Most of the time this is just going to add confusion and frankly it often doesn't look that professional to have a 3D bar chart in your report. If you want to show like a target or a secondary value like this and don't want it to be a bar but just want it to be say a shape or a dot like this, what you can actually do is instead of using a standard bar chart, go to combo chart and drop in a bar and line chart. Select the line and actually you're going to hit no line. We don't want, we don't want that line to show up but we do want a marker. So we go over to marker here, go built in, select the shape we want. I'm going to do a dot in this case, make it a little bigger. I'm going to do about 10 pixels. And then I'm going to make sure this has a nice big bright white line on the outside so it's easy to see. And boom, we've got a dot and a bar in the same chart. It's a nice little fun trick to use. So that is the core principles you need to start building basically any type of bar chart in Excel. Using these is going to let you do basically anything that Excel is capable of. If you got questions, you want me to dig into anything, let me know in the comments. If you're one of the rare people that watched this whole video, consider liking and subscribing so you see more of my stuff in your feed. And if you want a copy of this template or any of the templates you see in my videos, I send them out on my newsletter totally for free. The newsletter is just a free tutorial template that gets sent out on a regular basis, so you can actually have a file to look at while you're learning this stuff. Thanks again, have a good one, and me and Mo here say bye bye